What's going on, guys? Hope everybody's having a great day. So, I've been doing a lot of epoxy casting and some hybrid projects, kind of like this. This is the handle to what is going to be a hybrid epoxy mallet. Now, the color on it, I love. I did a custom mixed color, added two or three colors together, and absolutely love how that came out. Problem is, is that it's got air pockets all through it. So, this being my personal use mallet with the lathe, I'm okay with that, but I don't want that to happen again. So, I thought it was time to invest in a pressure pot. Now, I've watched a bunch of videos on this. Some guys make them out of PVC and say you can do it as long as you're only using 35, 40 pounds of pressure. But, I really wanted to try to make sure that mine were good and everything else I was reading is the best pressures are somewhere around 60 pounds from what I understand. So I went ahead and spent the money on one of these central pneumatic pressure pots for painting from Harbor Freight. Now, as you can see, it's not assembled. This is how it comes straight out of the box. I haven't done really anything to it yet. Now, it's already got the uh, pressure release valve it's already got the gauge and a pressure controller but we really don't need that some guys use this and cap off the ends and all this stuff i don't i don't need it i'm not going to use this for painting i just need the gauge pretty much so i can monitor my pressures as i'm doing the castings so and then also inside here is as you can see a nut and a uh, just pickup tube for the paint. These are designed actually for painting. So I've looked into it a lot, and I'm going to show you guys my design on turning this into a pressure chamber to actually do epoxy casting and get rid of all your air bubbles in your epox epoxy castings. So let's get at it. The first step in converting over the pressure pot is to actually change over the lid. Uh, as you can see on the inside here, there is a steel pickup rod for the paint and a pretty much a, a pressure release nut that has a hole all the way through it. Don't really need either one of these for this application. Now, I will tell you this. I have already pre-broken these loose uh, with, a, with a wrench, and they wasn't too bad. Some people say they're really hard, but these wasn't too bad for me. Uh, but I have done pretty much broken these down a crescent wrench will take this off just fine this was actually only finger tight when i got it and the tube is as simple as literally if you have to to clamp this to a work surface and just take your hands and twist it it is not locked tight at the end or anything like that it is just got a little bit of teflon tape to seal it off now, the reason for this is because we don't need either one of these sticking out into our tank because then it drastically reduces how much area we have to put different things in to be pressurized for casting. So there's a couple of different fittings on top of the lid. One is this T fitting that is the air inlet. The other one is this L shape and it is the paint outlet for the normal use of a pressurized paint can. So what we're going to do is actually remove the front of the T-fitting and keep this pressurized valve in the back. Now we're going to actually take the gauge off of the valve setup that come with this uh, pressure tank and put it on the opposite side of the T from the pressure valve. Right here where this is at and it will get rid of a lot of the stuff here and just simplify the setup. So the cell-shaped fitting on top of the lid is actually the paint outlet. That is where paint would have come out of when this can was being used as a pressurized paint tank. But to use it for the purposes we're needing it of pressurizing epoxy casting, we're going to use it for the air inlet. So we're going to add some fittings and an air nozzle. That way we can add air to the tank through this L-shaped fitting. Now on to actually installing all the new fittings. So I removed this fitting from the end of the T and installed the gauge in its place. And on the other L-shaped paint outflow fitting, I actually installed a couple of couplers and an adapter to take it down from a 3 8 to a 1 quarter inch 
opening also an elbow so it would allow for me to put the air chuck facing vertically now remember every single joint that there's threads you need to put some kind of thread sealer that way you don't have any pressure leaks now that all the fittings are uh, assembled and on the lid it's just as simple as putting things back together and using it now honestly it's super easy all you do is place the lid on the top of the tank clamp down these clamps and tighten them down so you don't have any pressure leaks or air leaks underneath the seal and then hook up an air hose to the chuck and turn it on now after you get everything assembled for the very first time make sure you test it you want to make sure you don't have any air leaks so that your pressure is not going to drain down if there is just go back and check again and make sure everything is good and tight make sure you have some kind of sealer on all your threads and after that test again once it's ready to go like that you're ready to start casting your epoxy and you're going to have some bubble free cast and it's going to look great so there it is guys the central pneumatic paint sprayer tank transformed into a resin casting pressure tank now this is a really simplified version of what some of the guys do to me, I didn't need anything crazy. I didn't want to use some of the parts. Anything I can do to save on weight or size or buying parts, great. If you have extra parts and want to make this a little more elaborate or a little different, hey, go for it. It's all about what's best for your applications. For me, I just needed something strong enough to do casting my resin without air bubbles and not blowing up on me. And... I like minimalistic when it comes to stuff like this. Simple is better to me. If there's issues, it's easy to find, easy to fix. So I really hope you guys have enjoyed it, and I really hope you guys have learned something from it. Until next time, we'll see you guys later.